page 549. But if you only come to intellect and rationality while you are dying, then you have missed the actual life and, in cowardice, missed the bearing of the life responsibility, because you do not derive any benefit for your past life anymore if, shortly before the major step out of the earthly life into the death life, you suddenly recognize the fact of the continued life of your spirit form as well as its rebirth in a new life together with the birth of a new personality in a new consciousness block. Neither anxiety, fear, cowardice, nor defiance allow a redemption or a reduction of the interaction of all thoughts, feelings, as well as all activity and all actions and deeds, because an insight and the recognition cannot be gained through a switching off and reducing of the interactions, but solely and exclusively through the searching and finding of the effective truth which you must fathom in yourselves, and indeed by finding the way of the truth in you, which is both the truth and the culmination point in one. And you are many amongst you whose intellect-based discernment, so often used by you in your life, plays, out of fear, a vicious game on you in the last hours while you are dying, namely in that you suddenly, in accustomed precaution, want to become quickly, intellectually, and rationally diligent when you realize that the release from your coarse, substantial body is continuously reaching a higher degree. But truly, that will not bring you any gain, because you cannot, in the short time of the dying, catch up on and finish off that which you have neglected throughout your life. So, so what you will die with as harvest is what you have sown during your life through your thoughts and feelings, your activity, and through your actions and deeds. So if you do come to your senses during the dying, then you will not change the least therewith, nor bring about any change and betterment, because it is not possible for you in the process of dying to finish off everything that you have neglected in the course of your entire life through the process of the perception, cognition, cognizance, knowledge, experience, living of the experience, and wisdom. It is sad for you who tumble away in your earthly existence in reckless self-deception, as if in a delirious state, and as a result you live in anxiety and fear and cause yourselves a bad destiny. Lucky are, however, you others who do not waste your earthly existence even though perhaps you only come out of your anxiety and fear and out of your determinations with regard to bad strokes of fate late in life and only slowly find the way to the truth and the consciousness-based evolution. Your serious searching for the truth is a staff and a support for you so that you can therewith make the conscious step in your evolution and towards the finding of the truth without anxiousness, trembling, and fear, and without stumbling. The time of the serious searching for the truth and the thought-feeling-based careful study of the life and death, as well as of the procreation, the birth, and the rebirth of the spirit form, and the birth of the new personality, all this you determine yourselves. But if you go this way in free volition, then this is an absolute progress for you, which you will bring which will bring you good things, make you happy, and make all heavy things surprisingly easy for you, because your good volition will be so much more powerful than you have ever had as a presentiment. And if you go the way of the truth with regard to your thought, feeling based, careful study of the life and death, and of the procreation the dying, the rebirth of the spirit form, and the birth of the new consciousness with the new personality, then purely, then the purely material 
will disappear as the most important aspect in your existence and grants an equalizedness between the spiritual, consciousness-based, and material. If you strive for the effective truth and for your consciousness evolution, you may often ask yourselves with regard to the pure earthly matters whether you shall free yourselves from your material goods or whether you shall simply pay no more attention to them. But truly that would be foolish because you are material life forms and therefore you also need the material goods. You shall not only cling onto your earthly goods and not let yourselves be oppressed through them, because you cannot tread the way of the fathoming of the truth through servitude. So in the searching for the truth it is not recommended for you it is not recommended to you to give or throw away your earthly goods so that you shall live in poverty. Truly you shall happily and freely appreciate and rejoice whatever material goods are accessible to you provided that you acquire them honestly and that you do not let yourselves be enslaved through them, so that you do not omit striving for the real truth of all truth because of such a servitude. So despite your material riches and all possessions of your earthly goods, you live in a fulfilling wise in the creational laws and recommendations. That you shall not cling onto material goods only means that you shall not let yourselves get carried away to assume that the grabbing together of material possessions is the highest and most important purpose of your earthly existence. So therefore you do not predominantly direct your thoughts and feelings upon them, and do not fall into possession greed. But if you do fall prey to the possession greed, with regard to material values of any kind, then this attitude will keep you away from the higher culmination point of the truth search and from the fathoming and following of the creational laws and recommendations, wherethrough you will go about in great erroneous assumption with regard to the fulfilling of the life sense. If you fall prey to the material earthly goods and possessions, then you will no longer find the time to search for and find the truth of all truth of the creation and its laws and recommendations. Just as is the case, if you have fallen prey to a religious, ideological or philosophical belief and therewith a devotion to a god, tin god, or idolized human being. Falling prey to material possessions and clinging thereon means being attached with all fibers of your life as well as your thoughts, feelings, wishes, and your hopes and desires only to the sole purpose of the acquisition and possession thereof and to worry about them. And this, irrespective of whether this attachment is for the sake of the possession and the goods themselves or for the sake of the avariciousness and the pleasure which is made possible through the amassing of money and goods. But no matter what causes and purposes lead to the greed with regard to goods and riches, in the end the result remains always the same. With the greed for possession and riches, for money, goods, and chattels, you bind and cling yourselves onto the purely material, wherethrough you lose the sight for what is ahead and above, for the effective truth, and therewith for everything creational, and for the creation given laws and recommendations. Your wrong understanding, however, that material possession and earthly goods do not belong to the assiduousness for the truth of all truth, and not to the higher striving of the consciousness evolution has, through the belief in a god, tin god, or idolized human being, created the senseless attitude in the majority of you earth humans that all endeavors, if they are taken seriously, with regard to the search for the effective truth, must have nothing to do with material possession and earthly goods. But you are not conscious that you equate the effective truth with your wrong belief in a god tin god, or idolized human being. Nor are you conscious of the fact that you as entire earth humankind have brought upon yourselves great disadvantage in your consciousness development, as also with regard to your humaneness, your behavior concerning the love for the next one, 
the love in general, as well as the being fair, the conscientious, fairness and righteousness, and the bearing of the responsibility in all things. In your wrong religious, ideological, or philosophical belief, you devaluate your consciousness based, therefore, the highest gifts that can be given to you in your life. Through your belief in an invented god, tin god, or idolized human being, you have indeed won a strange attitude with regard to your consciousness-based endeavors, because you confound these with religious and sectarian submissiveness and beggary, in which, in which case you are doggishly dependent on sacrifices and donations which you offer to your god, tin god, or a human being raised to a divinity, hoping to get help and enlightenment in exchange. Therefore, you have the same attitude as beggars, who in a beseeching, submissive wise, debase themselves in front of you in order to get a beggar's penny, and as a result they are as unable to create respect for themselves as are you, you who act just like them, only towards your god, tin god, or idolized human being. The respect which you ought to give yourselves, and which would also be due to you, if you perceived and recognized yourselves as lord and master of yourselves, and behaved accordingly. That respect you give, in doggish humility, to your fabulated god or tin god, or else to a human being that you have raised up as a divinity. All your wrong endeavors bear from the beginning a seed of the destructive in them, a seed of the destruction in them, which can grow more and more to the point that you cannot put yourselves on your own feet, but instead remain dependent on your religious, ideological, or philosophical belief, on your belief in a fabulated god, tin god, or a human being that you idolize. And precisely for the sake of the effective truth and your consciousness evolution, as well as the following of the creational laws and recommendations, you must protect yourselves against any belief, and it must be clear to you that you are not allowed to disdain the earthly goods because they are essential for your existence, and therefore you shall not listen to the wrong and irrational speeches of those who go about in their religious, ideological, or philosophical delusion and claim contrary to all truth, that the consciousness evolution could not be brought into agreement with material goods, but that you thereby, with regard to the consciousness evolution, talk of an evolution of the spiritual, because you do not know the truth, and do not know that as human beings you are, through your perceptions, cognitions, cognizance, the knowledge, the experience, and the living of it, as well as the thereout resulting essence, the wisdom, integrated through the creational laws directly into the evolution of your consciousness, and only indirectly into the spiritual, that is uncomprehensible to you. Therefore, you must search for and find the truth of all truth, and, indeed, in the wise that you search for the way of the truth in yourselves, fathom it and follow it, because only in this wise will you find the real truth which is itself the way and the culmination point. In your coarse, substantial world, the material must serve you as a shield so that you can avert like with like, that is, you avert the material with the material, in the wise that you do not let yourself be deluded by the material, so that your material possessions, your riches, goods, and chattels do not become excessive, and the burden to you of this, that you become dominated by them and thus lose the way of the truth in you through which you find the true love, freedom, harmony, and peace in you. Consider that you shall also not let yourselves be pushed into an unhealthy state of the truth refusal and truth denial through your materialistic fellow human beings. If they present you their material possessions and riches, and want to bribe you therewith. Be conscious that if you are ones who are striving upwards in terms of the evolution of your consciousness and searching for the truth, then your scrupulous opponents will bring forward their strongest weapon in order to delude you, namely their material riches and possessions, 
as well as their goods and chattels. And if you are ones who are striving upwards with regard to the effective truth of all truth, then it would be evil carelessness if you let yourselves be deluded by your opponents who are hostile-minded towards the truth through their material goods and values, because that could prove to be a major disadvantage for you.